Hi, everybody, and welcome to Guild Chat. Happy Friday. I'm your host, Ruby, and we have a lot to talk about today, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start talking about the things so many of you have been doing all week, which is roller beetle racing. Uh, let's jump in. I'll introduce our guests, or let them introduce themselves. Thank you guys first for joining, and thank you for giving me some of your time and giving them some of your time. Our pleasure. Um, mm -hmm. Why don't we just go down the line and have each of you introduce yourselves, talk about what you do here at ArenaNet, and what you worked on for Roller Beetle Racing. All right. Well, I'm Joe Kimmis. I'm a designer on the Current Activities team. And for Roller Beetle Racing in particular, I um, designed all the scripts that run the courses, constructed the courses, set up all the rewards and stuff. Pretty much all the design work on it. Nice. Your scarf is amazing, by the way. You look fantastic. Oh, I'm trying to get into the theme. <laughs> <laughs> Stay into the theme. Uh, Connor, and welcome to Guild Chat for your first show. Hi, first thank you. So I'm Connor Day. Uh, I'm a QA analyst, so I handle a lot of, a lot of the testing uh, here. And I handled most of the testing for roller beetle racing. Uh, and my biggest contribution was setting the time trial uh, times that all of you have been enjoying. <laughs> he is the fastest roller beetle racer in Guild Wars 2 <laughs> at Arena. That sounds like a challenge to someone. Uh, so. I'm sure there are people faster. But uh, Brett, how about you? Uh, so I'm Brett Nellermo. I'm the QA embed for the current activities team. Um, so for the first like initial three races and first run of achievements, I did the testing for roller beetle racing as well as some of the rewards and handed it off to Connor once it uh, got to be a little bit bigger of a release. Awesome. Thank you guys all. Mm -hmm. um, real quick, before we move on, we will be taking questions at the end of the segment. So if you have questions about roller beetle racing for these guys, drop them in chat and we will pick a couple of those out at the end and give you guys answers if we didn't cover them in the show. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's start. Um, I want to talk about the origin of roller beetle racing and where it came from and how it got into Guild Wars 2. <laughs> so <laughs> Everybody's just like, hey, Joe. Yeah, well, so this one is a journey way back. Um, Gather around. To the land of Guild Wars 1, where, um, so I actually joined the company around the time we were working on Nightfall, which was the Alonin expansion. And the Roller Beetles, or in that day, I think Rain and Rock Beetles, were a creature native to Alona that you encountered, and they were these like ridiculous looking little like <laughs> spinny beetles, and they would shoot rocks at you and chase you around and travel in packs. I remember. And they were, they were just <laughs> incredible. They make this little squeaking noise all the time. Um, and so they were a really memorable monster from that campaign. Mm -hmm. And around a couple months later, we were working on um, a new festival for the game, and one of our programmers, I, I don't know what started it, if a designer was like, hey, what if we did a racing minigame? But at some point, kind of like out of nowhere from my perspective, because I was working on something else, we had this downhill track where you got transformed into a roller beetle and you raced downhill with what was for Guild Wars 1, this completely you know out of left field system they had made for you speeding up downhill and slowing down uphill and we had a little like speedometer, yeah. and it all, it was really something. <laughs> um, <laughs> we spent a lot of time maintaining that. And so I tried that out in playtests, and it was really fun. I loved it. So skip forward years later, and we were talking about, all right, the next expansion for Guild Wars 2 is going to be Path of Fire. It's going to be in Alona. And... Um, myself and a couple other people <laughs> were like, all right, so when are we adding roller beetles? Like, that's the key feature of Alona for me. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm having a hard time entirely arguing with this, so. And um, they didn't quite make it for the original release because we were focusing on the Crystal Desert more so than um, the South Alona side. Right. And... Um, I think there was kind of a choice at some moment between do we get roller beetles or hydras? And even oh. I was willing to vote for hydras at that point because sure. it's just not the crystal desert without those hydras chasing you around and shooting meteors at you. <sighs> I like when they shoot beams. <laughs> yeah, beams are They've good. they got that triple attack. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so a couple story episodes down the road, yeah. we did finally reintroduce the ro roller beetle as a mount. Yeah. And you get to drive it around, and it's got like a much, much more modern take on the whole 
beetle physics and rolling fast downhill, slowing mm -hmm. down uphill. We finally got that, you know, really working instead of being this sure. crazy workaround that we had in Guild Wars 1. And immediately, of course, players were like, all right, so winter beetle races. And the current activity team, as soon as we heard about the roller beetle mount, we actually wanted to do roller beetle races. But at the time, we were working on Festival of the Four Winds. And we were thinking, OK, like, can, we at, can we incorporate this into the festival? Mm -hmm. And at the time, roller beetle was still very much in flux. Like, we were changing um, what kind of turn rate does it have? How fast can it actually go? What is its special ability? Um, and so if we had built any races, it would have actually um, turned into a nightmare of like, well, we, we thought you'd be able to make that jump. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but so, good to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we ended up shelving it for a bit. And then mm -hmm. when Festival Four Winds was done, revisited it and worked on it some more. And eventually we now finally got all the tracks out. Yay! Mm -hmm. It over time it kind of built up into a bigger event with, you know, daily quests and stuff to do and awesome prizes. So Yeah. Uh, In and out of game. I was really glad we were able to give that a lot of uh, time and attention to get it. Oh, that's awesome. Feeling really cool. Um Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about development a little bit. You mentioned we got all the tracks in. How did you how did you all decide where to put the tracks? How did that process go? So, um, the first step of that process for me was establishing some rules on where we wanted to put courses. Mm -hmm. uh, so the current activities team has done a bunch of content in Corteria maps, uh, kind of trying to either bring people into the old maps or um, in the case of some events, like say the bandit bounties, um, we know, okay, this has to be in Krita. We wanna focus these certain maps and kind of try to tell a story with where it's going on. So one rule we wanted to have for roller beetle racing was that it does not take place in any of the level one to 15 early zones of the game. Right. Because if you're still trying to learn the game and you know, 40 people come tearing <laughs> past on beetles, it's a little extra confusing. Sure. Um, like, wait, what boss was that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and similarly, and this may change in the future, right? Like, I hope to add more races. Um, we didn't want to put any in the highest level zones because there's a higher risk of, like, we're trying to race and then suddenly claw of Jormag and it's going to put a damper on things, right? The more difficult the zone is, the higher the risk of some event taking you out. Yeah. This is valid, but I did express yesterday that I really love the thought of the Claw of Jormag fight happening, and like you said, 40 people just come zipping through just it. Just crash into the that's ice it, wall. Don't mind us, we'll be just a second. <laughs> so. Um, so we ended up settling on kind of that mid-range zones, and what we did was, um, at the time, actually, one one of the big inspirations for doing roller beetle racing was the number of players who, as soon as they got the beetle, were already going, okay, like... I gotta try this out. Let's uh, like, we'll establish a course using like our raid markers or uh, just having people standing there. And so we watched a whole bunch of videos of player-made courses uh -huh. to kind of get a sense of what do people like doing on the beetle. Oh wow! Uh, what are what does a good corner look like? And but after that, ended up kind of picking the zone first. Then I, we would go into the zone and just drive around a lot on the beetle. Sure and try to figure out what is the, um, like, what are some cool routes on this zone? What can we show in this zone? Like, the, um, one example on uh, Gandharan Fields was I was driving around the lake a lot trying mm -hmm. to find some places where we could do the, um, if the beetle hits water going very fast and at just the right angle, you'll get this kind of skip right. along the water. Yeah. And I really wanted to have that happen somewhere. We ended up ultimately with just a tiny little section of water skipping. Very, very small. Because <laughs> it turns out the leeway, like if you don't know about the water skip before that section, oh. if we try to make you go as far as you can, you'll fail every time. If you don't, if you don't plan for it and like mm -hmm. take a tiny little hop right before you hit the water, if you don't do it just right, there's a huge difference between 
Little how area. far you make yeah. it. So we did a little one just to teach you, hey, here's something you can do. It's right after a straightaway. It's basically impossible to fail. Um, that said, we've gotten some incredible data back from our analytics team showing um, you know, the heat map of people doing the races uh -huh. and where people are um, falling into the water, basically, because, <laughs> the, <laughs> because it shows you know, where are people getting off their mount. And in general, it's just you know, the whole map. People drive around. Sometimes they get dismounted. But the water areas are just bright red <laughs> oh, no. from people who don't quite make the jump. Oh, so, at the end? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where's that one? Oh, on Gondarin. There's, oh, okay. a, there's, there's a, a big huge jump. jump right at the end. Yeah, uh, Gondarin you... Fields has the climax jump. Mm -hmm. I would right guess uh, the... that bridge where you either go over the hill or the S and that, turn. Yes. Oh, where you... Yes. Yeah. No, people aren't it's very easy to People don't that. fail the little short section, mm -hmm. but that bridge with the right turn. Yeah. yeah. Um, some people think that is a jump. <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> Maybe go slow. It's a jump. Racing hint. Yeah, if you take <laughs> it at the right speed, the fastest way through there, I still think, is doing a little jump onto the bridge, mm. but don't try to stunt jump it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I wanted to mention... Um, Maybe we had uh, a little bit of leeway in between Festival of the Four Winds and whatever we were working on next, and uh, there was a question that we spent maybe a couple of hours on, like what maps feel good to race on, and uh, after spending a couple of hours just going around them, it was every map. Like, <laughs> uh, it 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 seemed like it should be have to be relegated to only specific areas, but it ended up feeling really nice. And, every place we checked it out. Mm. Yeah, the, awesome. o the other um, hurdle we had a couple times with picking courses was you'd launch into a map on the test servers, drive around for a bit, and then um, maybe like 10 or 20 minutes later, suddenly, you know, the Flame Legion is now attacking this town, the Char closed their gates, and oh, yeah. now that course you had in mind doesn't work. Mm. Um, because you're going through that yeah, on, area. On Diesa Plateau, I had this, you know, the course wasn't quite finished, right? But it was starting to solidify. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, there's this really scenic part where you go zipping through one of the char towns there. This is really cool. Like, we get to see that char architecture. There's, like, overarching pipes and, like, whirring gears. And the gates close. And I, I spent a little time going like okay what if i force the gates to open if there's a race going on or like we'll just let you hit it with the beetle mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, we decided to just go around and yeah that would have uh, been cool it ended up working out that's yeah. one of my favorite courses yeah so. ds is fun that's awesome um you mentioned that you worked on the time trials connor so yes. who's the best beetle racer me yeah okay Connor's i the best beetle i kept tr we would be on the test servers as soon as we had the time trials set up, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, "All right, like I've I made the course, I've done it a bunch. <laughs> um, I feel pretty good about my time. This seems like a good, you know, ballpark to base sure. the high scores on, right? None of the gold times are just literally the best time anyone could get. We like figured mm -hmm. out what do we think is the best time, mm -hmm. back it off a couple seconds, yeah. back it off, you know, thirty more yeah. seconds for silver and so on. Well, yeah, that was and that's that was my question for you. I mean making the time to beat be the best racer <laughs> best racer internally i wouldn't say i'm the seems absolute unfair. best no i mean one of the fastest that's like that doesn't seem like a good formula like where do well, you go from there it's content that's going to be around for a long time this isn't just going to go away so we figured mm -hmm. it would be you know it's a good thing that to be challenging sure you know, something that'll be around for a while you can try and improve your times for as long as you wish. <laughs> Plus, we have cool rewards. One for a average time silver, which is a little bit easier, and then we have a potentially more prestigious award for having the very difficult time. Yeah. One point of feedback we uh, got from, we added a sort of prototype beetle race during Halloween in the Mad Kings Raceway, and that ended up being much more of a like kind of stunt track it didn't quite that get was hard. what <laughs> it was very hard. It didn't quite get what a lot of people wanted out of beetle racing because it was much more about like doing a bunch of consecutive tight drifts, mm -hmm. um, running into pumpkins and exploding, running into mm -hmm. gravestones and getting stopped. As you do. Um, 
But one really common thing we saw was some people liked the challenge. They were like, oh man, like I spent some amount of time struggling and I finally got under a minute. And some people were like, I am not going to, like I'm never going to be able to do this. So we wanted to be able to have both of those player types have fun with this mm -hmm. and not feel locked out. So we split the meta into two parts. There's the um, like just kind of normal difficulty, play the tracks a bunch, get the silver times meta that you get the cool scarf for. And then there's the rolling ace meta for getting all gold times that um, you get basically a slightly, slightly different scarf and a title for it. Mm -hmm. It works. <laughs> so the hope is that uh, anyone can get in there and with a little practice, get that normal meta. Yeah. And then if you're really inspired, if this is the content you really enjoy, then you get something to show for it and something to say, hey, like, I can do the fastest times. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. <laughs> um, so I'd like to hear about some of your favorite parts of development. What were some of the most fun things while you were getting this into the game? Uh, well, And whoever can go. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for starting with me. Uh, well, one of my favorite things was uh, we had an internal uh, play test. I had a pretty <coughs> large amount of participants, mm -hmm. and uh, I spent most of it winning, of course. Just saying. <laughs> I'm very humble. Uh, <laughs> you I, are. I appreciate this. <laughs> I thought I was winning during one of those play tests, and it was just that I couldn't see Connor. What? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, on uh, one of those, uh, somebody... This, this, maybe this Someone guy, outside somebody, the door? or No, maybe somebody <laughs> sitting right here next to me oh, okay. uh, decided that I had won too much and uh, set me on fire. <laughs> had he won too much? Maybe. Okay. I got uh, back on and finished in so second. Yeah. And <laughs> the first time you told me the story, I was like, did you just like literally reach across your desk with a lighter? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was in a chat program with some of our other testers, and they said, man, we really hate that Connor is winning every time. <laughs> uh, and so I said, okay. And then uh, <coughs> I use I some this. commands and set Connor on fire right before the race started. <laughs> this is not a buff. This no, does not it definitely, count. definitely didn't count as a buff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so on the subject of getting set on fire, one of my favorite moments during <coughs> development was um, oh, yeah. one of the <coughs> um, one of the later tracks that we added was the uh, Mount Maelstrom track. That when we were making it, I knew from the start like. If at all possible, we have to go through the volcano, right? Like, mm -hmm. that is the centerpiece sure. of that map. Um, it's the fun area. We can jump across the lava. Um, most people will make it. Some people won't. Uh, you can survive a little bit of lava on the beetle. It's fine. You can't skip across the lava, though. Um, that's unfortunately. That sucks. And, <laughs> and we, so we saying. came up with this course where you get the chance to ramp over the lava and go through the lava tunnels, and there's a... <laughs> particularly deadly corner at the end of that lava tunnel um, that you have to drift through. But we had the course all set up. We were starting to like set times on it. Um, and Brett comes to me at some point and he's like, hey, so if the Mount Maelstrom meta event triggers with the Mega Destroyer and players fail it, and you know the volcano is erupting, then the center like of the volcano core gets this you know deadly heat effect that lights you on fire, and you take massive damage, and your screen goes really blurry because of the heat, and you're burning, and mm. and he was like, I don't think it's possible to make it through the core. <laughs> <laughs> Not During possible that. for me. I'm bad at Maelstrom. <laughs> <laughs> and we tried it a couple times, and I think maybe we established it was technically possible, but you had to fly through mm -hmm. that section. It's not that you're bad. It's that you have room for... You have opportunities and Absolutely. challenges. Mm -hmm. Right. See how that and works? And so we ended up... Um, if you are doing the beetle race, you actually <laughs> get an immunity to that effect. You're not immune to the lava, but you can ignore the core overheat. Fantastic. So, <laughs> welcome. Uh, my favorite part yeah. is that Connor got a character reference oh, yeah. in this yeah. content. <laughs> so, uh, in all of the courses, there is an Azura named Con, C-O-N-N, -N, uh, mm -hmm. who makes references to uh, real-life racing type of 
stuff because Connor is indispensable and brought that knowledge. <laughs> so if you him. see that character, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, I saw down. some people on Reddit. I think caught the uh, reference to Kimi Raikkonen. Uh, there are a few others out there. So that's <laughs> awesome. Um, what about the Winner's Day gifts on the track? I don't remember who that note was from. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. That was also on Maelstrom, uh, <laughs> right uh, right next to where you start the adventure. Um, if Winter's Day is on in the open world, it'll spawn gift boxes that will fall out of the sky and knock you over. And if you're too close to them, it'll explode and spawn scrit. Uh, so if Winter's Day happened to be on and you were next to this adventure, you would get knocked off. Well, not knocked off your mount, but you'd start getting assaulted by Scrid. I, I'm not seeing the problem. Please tell me this is like, <laughs> hey, look at this awesome thing we found. We'll make it a feature in a future race. I'm saying. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I have one more question about chicken tonics. Oh, the chickens. Why are there so many chickens? Uh, why are there so many chickens? <laughs> Who did so, this? So one fun thing there is um, we did a poll a while back, I think. Um, that was with the early this year. I think it was with the second release of um, the Awakened the Invasions. Invasions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we added an NPC who just we wanted to see, you know, how many players we could get to participate. So we just kind of did this lighthearted. What is your favorite? What kind of animal would you like most as a pet? And I think we asked between cat, dog, bear, choya, and chicken. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I almost missed that. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, something else, and I can't remember what. And we actually got a lot of responses to that. Um, some players complained that the way we polled was, you know, unfavorable to some of them because we present them in an order, and that affects it. And I learned a lot about um, polling. You have but to present uh, them in some order. But so we had this data, and we kind of wanted to... Um, put it in the game somehow, and that ended up being that we implemented all of these transformation tonics and then set their prices are all based on that poll, as well as the fact that Cat got two tonics because it was the highest rank. Mm -hmm. uh, so that does mean Chicken had the least votes. Aww. So the bird fans in the audience really need to get their friends to vote for Chicken <laughs> next time. Um, Can we just talk about how that's but, a weird thing to say. But the chicken tonic <laughs> ended up being one of the more incredible ones because I didn't even realize as we were going to implement it, but there are a lot of chicken models yeah, in the game. Yeah, there are. There's even more chicken varieties in reality, but you know. We're, we're, give it time. We're working <laughs> on it. <laughs> so it can, it can turn you into some of those chicken models. Yeah, I think. Fantastic. Um, and we, so we had something like nearly a dozen different chicken models split between roosters and hens. So I made the tonic actually split you to whether you're a rooster or a hen. And so I think there's like five each. Mm -hmm. Something like that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I, now that I know that we have all those chicken models, like. We gotta come up with something for yeah. those. Yeah. Some yeah. other chicken content. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what it is yet, but it. we'll get there. Well, do you guys wanna answer some questions? Cause I see some. Yeah, so can you all see those? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's one question about um, the mimosa tree in Brisbane oh, that tree. Wildlands. Everybody so loves that that's, tree. Uh, do they? No. Uh. Uh, so there's <laughs> a funny thing or tragedy there is we never, s when the zone spins up, all of the logging nodes are kind of randomly assigned based on certain criteria to where they are. And we never had that one interfere with the race yep. during development. Yeah, I ran that race so many times, and I n and never, never once happened. saw that tree <laughs> but in the middle of that route. There's good news on that. Uh, so we went out on the development servers and moved that particular logging node. So um, that's still making its way through testing mm -hmm. and up the pipeline towards release. But in a, so we won't do an emergency change for it, but in a release soon, that tree will get moved. Also, I got the artists to go in on Brisbane Wildlands and increase the um, some of the draw distance numbers for some mm -hmm. of those routes mm -hmm. that get that, in your way. So bush. those will also become a, <laughs> quite a bit more visible in that same release. 
Uh, so awesome. look forward to that. It it depends on what your like uh, draw distance is for environment. So if if your draw distance is still as low as you can possibly set it, it may yeah. pop up. It'll kind be a, of it'll soon, be a but little it's better. So much improved now. But it'll be a lot better if you are on mediumish yep. settings. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. nice. That's good to know. Emergency mimosa tree replacement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Had to get that out of there. What else? Let's, Let's see. see. How quick did we manage to implement beetle races? Is a question somebody asks. So. Um, one thing that we focused on with Beetle Races was making the core of it, like the base scripts that all of them share and the concept like how do the checkpoints look, how do um, we handle like traveling between checkpoints. We tried to take as much knowledge as we could from the other races we've made and make the like best possible race and that took a while. Um, it was like, probably a couple weeks of polishing just one of the tracks and trying to figure out um, how can we make this as responsive and you know, quick feeling off the gate mm -hmm. as we can. Um, but the nice thing is because we did all that work front-loaded, implementing a single race only takes a couple days. Okay, that's mm -hmm. not too bad. Um, I actually see one that I'm interested in hearing from Connor on this. Mm. Are there any secrets or pro tips for getting gold on some of those harder uh, tracks? You, you want all my tips, huh? I want, <laughs> I want a few, and you can't just set the other people on fire. That doesn't. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, can't do that. It doesn't work in a live environment. Uh -huh. <laughs> that doesn't give you a gold time. Well, the first thing is you got to go fast. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> if nobody got that. Yeah. Uh, but the second thing, probably the actual most major tip I can give people, uh, most secret, I guess. Uh, I've watched a lot of videos of people doing these uh, circuits. And I know drifting is fun, but it's not actually the fastest way to get around a corner most of the time. Uh, in real life and in this game, uh, the shortest path is not exactly the fastest one. So going, having a higher speed over a wider turn is oftentimes faster than trying to drift around that corner. Interesting. Okay. See, that's, that's not real life all. racing advice. <laughs> that's not all your tips, but that's no, one that's good the biggest one. That'll yeah. save you the most time. That's awesome. So you t if I remember correctly, because you explained this to me at some point, you take the corner on the outside and veer towards the. Mm -hmm inside of it if it's beneficial to the next corner to do so yes oh. what about youtube brett do you have any tips uh connor mentioned watching videos there are guides people have for playing through all of these with and without masteries i'm pretty sure i've seen that uh and uh i think connor is top 50 without with default controls as well so it's possible yeah. but uh watching videos and um seeing where other people take their lines to get success. Uh, sometimes when you're playing, especially for the first couple of times, it can be hard to divine what we intend from you. And if somebody already has it down, getting some tips from them is very helpful. That's mm. awesome. Yeah. Um, those are really good tips. So I would just throw in a lot of the special boost power-ups that fill your boost gauge. First of all, are placed with the idea that as soon as you get that, hit boost is mm -hmm. never a bad idea. Um, there are times that it's good to save it. Like I like to save the one that's on um, Gindaran Fields. There's one right in front of the little water section mm -hmm. that yeah. most of the time you can hit that water section fast enough that you, won't, you don't need the boost for it. But you'll always lose a little speed going across the water. So boosting out of it can actually be really advantageous. But also with those boost power-ups, um, if you pick up the boost power up and you had like 90% of your boost gauge filled, then you're kind of wasting the power up. I mean, you don't have a choice, but try to figure out how you could be having your boost filled right before you get the power up. Mm -hmm. Either or either have your boost nearly empty as you get the power up so you get the full benefit from it or boost into the power up. Okay. So that if your gauge is still draining from boosting, you'll get most of the gauge back. Mhm. Mm and that lets nice. you uh go fast and ha be able to save the power up for when you start slowing down of it. Um, someone yeah. asks, are we planning to add beetle races to other maps in the future? I'd love to. Uh, I think we'll be looking at how many people are enjoying this and uh, you know, hopefully we'll have the chance to add a couple more maps and get even more racing. 
All right, here's a question for me. Are you guys loving player reaction? Oh, and yeah. And do you have a favorite thing that you've seen? <sighs> There's that one video from Twitter of those every single person smashing into the <laughs> that bush. That's Don't judge me. <laughs> 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 that, that one's up there. Um, yeah. I, you I've, guys? Oh, I've, go ahead. I've really liked seeing... Um, like we got into a, l a little earlier, the Halloween race was a little more contentious. Not everyone enjoyed it. Sure. I've seen some people saying, I didn't like the Halloween race. I do really like these ones. Okay. So that made me feel like, okay, we... That feels good. Um, mm -hmm. We managed to bring them back on the subject of beetle racing. So That's good. How about you, Brett? Um, mainly uh, where we our strike zone was for difficulty. Like mm -hmm. our, our plan was... Uh, to make it pretty clear over the course of both the uh, training adventure and all of the other races to have a pretty clear delineation of this is the easiest one and this is absolutely the hardest one. Uh, and it sounded like that caught a lot more people. Uh, they were able to try out the much easier one and then work themselves up to being more comfortable to do a very difficult one. So the fact that we have more people that may not have been as into Beetle doing it now mm -hmm. and enjoying it is yeah. great to see. I think it helps, too, that you guys included the rental mounts um, mm -hmm. because that was something that a lot of people I found didn't realize on day one was that, yeah, this looks great, but what about me? I don't have Pathfire. I haven't gotten my Roller Beetle mount yet. Guess what? <laughs> yeah, and I got top 50 with those rental mounts and no masteries, yeah. so <laughs> get out there. Duly noted. <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> So, um, have you guys seen the traffic cone player? Oh, I, the I candy did see corn. that. Did you see we were yeah, it around this corn. morning. Good yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious and so nice. So, <laughs> all right. Well, do you guys have anything else that you want to make sure we cover before we head on? Uh, well, uh, yes. I forgot to bring it up <laughs> earlier, but so we added another poll um, with this release of the same NPC asking, well, what do you like about roller beetle racing? And the options on that poll were um, pushing to finish among the front runners, competing to get a record time, the prizes, mm. racing together with my friends, Aww. and um, how cute the Beatles are. <laughs> so I mean, they're not wrong. You can still go answer this poll in game. Just you can still answer the animal one. Um, the polls will stay open forever. And where do they find them? Um, at the Beetle Race in Diesa Plateau mm -hmm. yeah. is the polling NPC, and the first poll, the animal one, is in South Sun Cove. Okay. But I do have some early results for the Beetle Racing poll. So does anyone want to, you can ha guess now, you know. It's a few seconds to <laughs> what guess. What do you think <laughs> what is, is the, front the front runner right now of the ones that I just listed? I already looked, so. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's changed significantly. All right, yeah, get your guesses well. in. What has, let's see, can we say what has the least amount of votes and help them narrow it down a little? All right, sure. Um, I will tell you right now, the current lowest number of votes is racing together with my friends. <laughs> because oh, you're not in there to make road. friends. <laughs> I know, yeah. It's <laughs> this is not, you're not there to make friends. Yeah, yeah only one person can win. Mm-hmm. It's like the Highlander, but <laughs> <laughs> you get a scarf instead. <laughs> and slightly fewer beheadings. Mm -hmm. Only slightly? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so they've <laughs> had some time to from. guess right. at the front runner. So I won't, I won't go up the whole list, but number one, drum roll, is the prizes. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> so. I think Raise your hand if you're surprised. Everyone's enjoying that scarf. So, so much. <laughs> How do you get the real life one? <laughs> or is that like the only one? That's it. Joe just made it. Well, <laughs> secrets. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys very, very much for your time. I really appreciate coming in and talking about this. And it's been fun watching everybody have so much fun with it in game. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope and to see everyone out there on the track and mm -hmm. you know, yes. give it a try. Thanks for having Earn your scarf. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Tons right. of other prizes. You guys stick around because we're going to change gears. Uh -huh. <laughs> I Sorry. <laughs> 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 I just broke Nick. <laughs> that kidding. was good. I liked it. It's terrible. <laughs> I thought it was one when you said surprises. 
<laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry for the terrible pun. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to talk to Nick Hernandez for a little bit about the Basenji dog whistle that we put in the game recently. Mm-hmm. So you guys stick around. You guys get back to work. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we'll be yeah. right back. Great talking with you. Mm-hmm. I'll see you later. Thanks. back. <laughs> All right, so we have switched over to talk about the Basenji pet. <laughs> and <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> I, I, I just looked at the screen for the first time and I just see Dog Whisperer and that's that's my title. What? Now, so oh, really when that. did you do that, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know that was going to happen either, so that's I, I fantastic. Was, was a wonderful surprise. All right, well, why don't you, For you've been on the show a bunch of times before, times, yeah. but for those of you guys who are watching who are new, why don't you talk about what you do here at ArenaNet besides Dog Whisperer? <laughs> Okay. Um, God, hi, <laughs> my name is Nick. Uh, I am a QA embed for Living Worlds. Um, so my primary role is to, um, you know, make sure that all the episodes are, are running accordingly. Um, I'm primary for episodes three and six um, of the seasons, and on on the side, as you will soon find out, I I do some uh, design work um, for for internet and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and if you have questions for Nick about the Basenji pet at the end of this segment, we will take those and Nick will maybe pick out a couple that we have time for and answer them. For sure, yeah. Um, why, don't we, why don't we start, though, by talking about this was kind of a personal project. Mm-hmm. So how did this come to be? Uh, so, you know, as, as the... With, with, as being the person who does three and six... Um, we enter, there are some points where we have a little bit more, you know, free time than, than other points in development. Um, and during those points, I like to try and find things to do, you know, to kind of help bolster my education sure. and try to see, find areas where I can become better, learn more things, that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, for, for this, um, right around the beginning of uh, episode three of season four, actually, uh, I decided on making this <laughs> and I've just been kind of working on it um, every now and then a little bit uh, since then um, trying to get in like you know minor minor requests every now and then whenever we have a little bit of bandwidth and uh, yeah just trying to see trying to see if we could get a pet dog in the game that is actually you know fun interactive that kind of stuff yeah yeah all right, so this has been in development for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, when did you start working on this? Like way back when? Uh, yeah, so uh, around around the beginning of um, episode three development. I don't know, like when. So 
I actually requested uh, the, the Senjis that we that we put into episode three. Yeah. Uh, and that and was then, you too. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, uh, we like them so much that we decided to make them rewards early on. Um, because, you know, why why not? Because <laughs> give, give people some, some sweet dogs. Um, and, and, yeah, so I've been working on it, like I said, uh, since then, kind of up until a point where um, once... Once we kind of finally, sh once I finally showed it to like um, the the design leadership, um, you know, we um, I actually had to put a pin in it because of course once you hit a specific point in development, you know, like you got to ramp up and it's like okay, right. focus time, you yes, know, got to make sure is, that there's not a lot all of this downtime. stuff is great, yeah. Um, but then recently, uh, uh, the M the MTX slash commerce team approached me and they were like, hey, uh, we would love to be able to ship this, so can we like get it on the cadence and on rails to, you know, go out to yeah. players and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. There was, I'm, I'm like trying to even figure out where to start because there's so much cool there, about there. this little guy that. <laughs> there's a lot of stories about I don't this little know, guy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Pick your favorite to start with. You don't only have to pick one. Oh God. Okay. Um, well, it depends. There's, there's so many different facets to look at. Right. So, uh, I could talk about absurdities. <laughs> like Please. there was there was a point where uh, some like the way the way I scripted something, you know, like I, I I'm a QA, but at but even I can't find everything when it comes yeah. to the things I'm developing. So uh, when we actually had this get a legitimate pass, one of the bugs that came back was like somehow somebody found a way to make the dog stay, but the transform leave, so they could reactivate it. So then what would happen is they would get the dog do something i think they would like log out and then log back in and then they would reactivate it but that old dog was still there so they could basically just get themselves a legion of basenjis to run around the map with um i fail to see the problem <laughs> server performance that's the problem oh yeah okay. i know it's it's unfortunate and also that's an amazing bug though <laughs> yeah but like imagine the cleanup and like the the feeding requirements that's for all that jazz that'd be well and for a while i mean you were feeding this thing like a side of beef mm -hmm. <laughs> the, so the, the 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 side of beef used to be a lot bigger for for those who don't know um the thing that you see now used to be well twice, it was like a placeholder thing it was yeah. huge yeah it was it was very large yeah, and that was one of the things when I was looking at it on dev in development, and you were asking me, you know, what do you think? What's, yeah. and I was like, well, I'm concerned. <laughs> is the thing? It's, it's, it's diet. It's like you know, the Senjis are are very driven and uh, energetic dogs, so they just need a lot of a lot of food. I'm just gotta, like, but where is this energy. going? <laughs> like, I feel like it should look like a snake that swallowed something big. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a black so. void or a black hole inside of there. You know, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was that was a thing that you had to work on. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm a little sad about the loss of the Legion of Basenjis, but I understand server performance. Yeah, server performance. So is, is what else is important? Um, I I mean, there's the, it's like there are too too many stories. I mean, mm -hmm. I think like I said, it depends on which which angle you come at it from. Well, uh, let's talk about um, the the implementation of how your character directs your Basenji friend to do something? Because I remember being very excited when I realized there were hand signals. Mm -hmm. And how did that happen? I know you didn't just like have time to build character, extra character animations nope. <laughs> for everything in your free yeah. time. So the way, um, <coughs> you know, I, with, with these things, I try my best to uh, recycle without, you know, um, making it seem like something is recycled and sure. or without causing any sort of detriment and things like that. Um, so with this one, uh, I basically just opened up the entire character library and I looked at all of the animations that players could do and I was like, hmm, that one. <laughs> and I'm like, that, that's a good one for this skill. And then I would go through and I'm like, okay, that one's a little too long. So then I had to like fi figure out ways to cut them because like the handshake one, for example, um, that, that one is actually from, I think, Winter's Day 20, uh, 2014, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Um going back it's like they're ringing the bell and i was like well that's you know shake oh huh. hey yeah uh so that like i said that that animation is actually about uh 13 13 or 14 seconds so i had to find a way to be able to time correctly and what's great about our engine is the fact that we have animation blending uh so what it what happens is like the second a animation gets 
uh, gets told that it's no longer going to happen, and the next one gets kind of cued. Mm -hmm. There's a like a, a rig like blend phase that happens within a specific amount of time, so that way it looks seamless. That's why you can like. Uh, if you're like a greatsword warrior, you can go from running to doing a crazy spin to like then run and then like do your s sword swing up to then back world like dodge and things like uh -huh. that. It doesn't look clippy. It's yeah, because without of our that choppy breaking. System. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so thanks to that stuff, I was I was able to, uh, you know, try to find the best ways to, to add these kind of minor uh, polish details without blowing out scope. That's awesome because your scope was for a while there kind of. Kind of limited, yeah. And like I said uh, earlier, it was mostly just like as as we went through each episode, I was looking at like how much budget each each thing kind of had, and then it's like, okay, well, here's here are things that like, you know, like do we have time to maybe get this stuff or, or this stuff? And that's sure. actually how like you know the VO lines came in. Um, yeah, we had a little bit of budget, so uh, we just put in those those quick lines, mm -hmm. had them recorded, and then. It was all good to go. Yeah, that kind of thing works in well because we were down there at the time we were doing VO recording anyway. So, mm -hmm. hey, can I get a couple extra lines? Yeah. And, um, and I mean, like, the way, you know, it's, it's, it's never meant to be kind of like... Th this is just all sort of happy accident, to be, to be fair. Or at least it's that, that's kind of how it started out. Um, and luckily for us, you know, the way that we do it, it's like there is this block of time and then anything fitting inside of that block of time is... Is, is, sure. is possible. So that's, like I said, all these are just kind of just worked out. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the system of teaching your dog? His yeah. Tricks. Oh, God, there's a lot where to start. His tricks, her tricks. Uh, it's, uh, it's tricks. <laughs> it can be, uh, I think we tried to make it as gender neutral as possible. Mm -hmm. um, as you could tell by, like, who's a good dog and or that's my dog. And <laughs> I wasn't going to say jazz. it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my dog. Um <laughs> Uh, so the way that it actually worked out when I when I was trying to do this is I was trying to make something that felt lifelike, but also, um, you know, was kind of like fun and made you feel like you you were ready to like approach it again and again and again. Yeah. Um, so there's the way that I built it out was that there is two systems uh, within the within the dog itself. And one is the horizontal progression, which is what you see, um, you know, skills one through uh, nine. Mm -hmm. And you unlock three, four, five, six, three, or three through nine um, on a daily gate. And then there's vertical progression, which I don't know. Uh, I've been I've been reading through all of the comments and all the feedback. Uh, and I don't know if, pe like, if people have quite caught on yet, so I might be spoiling this a little bit. So, spoiler should I, should alert, I, I continue? Um, that is entirely up to you okay. if you want to spoil it, but spoiler alert right here. <laughs> if you don't want Basenji spoilers, beware. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, what, basically, uh, there's horizontal progression and there's vertical progression. With the vertical progression system, uh, you know, the more you teach a dog or any, any animal a yeah. trick, the better they're going to be at it, the more successful they're going to be at it, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the more you use each skill, the more likely you know you are to not get that failure state, and it gets to a point where like uh, I'll use Shake as an example. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if you if you look at Shake, there is the like you fail, and then when you don't fail for the first uh, for the first few times, he shakes <laughs> like he, he actually his does body. his entire body, yeah. and and that doesn't give you the paw. And so like the iconography, there's a disconnect between the iconography. Uh, that you actually see on the skill and the dog itself, but if you keep using that skill, keep teaching it things, uh, there will come a point where it does what the iconography suggests, and yeah. he will actually hand you his. Ball. It understands. You're not asking me to shake my body. You're not. Yeah. You want me to shake your paw yes. or shake my paw? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a really cute learning system, and I got such a kick out of that. Um, that you've got this system in place where this you're little pet understands not only the command but the context of the command yeah and it's it's such an in-depth thing that i wouldn't expect yeah. from but this but basenjis are a very smart breed <laughs> <laughs> in fact uh yeah so we did right uh if i, if I can go a quick tangent we did uh we did some research into basenjis and i remember one time uh so we found out that basenjis don't actually bark basenjis yeah, are called the barkless, barkless dog. dogs um so luckily, you know, when we had uh, 
Joe Joe Clark, who absolutely killed this. He's the he was the he audio did. designer for this. Um, you know, when we came to him, we were just like, help, <laughs> because these animations look like he's barking, and we can't have him bark, please. And then he's just like, I got it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. And then he, I remember he like pulled us all into a room uh, for the final audio review, and like for for the entire week before that, I was you know I was nervous because this is like. This is, like I said, like a pet project, and it's something that was not going to go live. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, so, so for those of you who didn't realize, Ruby just dropped her pen, <laughs> and there was a quick pause. Shut up. <laughs> but um, it's just gonna live down there now. That's I'm fine. done. Yeah, he's 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 enjoying the carpet. Um, and I completely lost my train of thought. What was I? We were talking about my pen. My no. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, so I, w I was nervous up until yes. up until then because you know it's like this this didn't really have any sort of like solidified audio for it itself. Um, but Joe was Joe just knocked it out of the park. Like he he just did such a great job. He definitely hit on what it feels like to to be like like to have a bisenji, you know, because they're they're quiet until they're not quiet. And for those of you who don't know, instead of barking, what they do is they kind of like yodel. Um, <laughs> And of course, like you know, you'll still get like the little like Rah! like that that yeah. kind of stuff, but they'll never do like a loud bark. Yeah, just like the little huff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like little huffs and stuff like that. So definitely, like that, the things like that both add to the personality, which is one of the reasons why you know this dog works so well as kind of like mm -hmm. its own one because it's it's a unique dog breed to begin with. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know. This, the, it's just things like that that made me really excited for it and kind of just help up the, the the quality of it yeah in my opinion i really like it um well we'll try to do some questions here in just a moment so if you've got them and haven't put them in the chat yet please do so um we laughed but in while we're doing that mm -hmm. we laughed earlier about the that's my dog yes and do you want to talk about that just a little bit <laughs> yeah so uh as i said before uh unfortunately not everything can be caught um there was a lot of feed. So there was feedback in the uh, when we were playing through and playing through it and stuff like that. That the lines were, of course, spammy. So what I did was I did a pass on all of the the dialogues. And the way the dialogues work is that there is a actual like cooldown timer that you can mm -hmm. put on them to make sure that um, you don't actually get that line spam. And my understanding of how how they kind of live on the server and where they're called from mm -hmm. uh, was not. Was was not accurate with with the actual implementation as you saw because my thought process was uh, these things were all sharing a dialogue with a percentage chance to have different lines fire. Sure. So my thought process was these two skills and the uh, the pet activation would all share the same cooldown, um, but that's not the way it works because <laughs> each skill has its own individual script and the way that actually works in the back end for our system is that each script calls on its own version of that dialogue. And that means that each one has its own cooldown. So because of that, you were able to hear those lines be very repetitious, um, which is something that we've been looking into uh, and kind of helping rectify. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you commented that not everything can be caught. And yeah. I thought of our conversation about that earlier when uh, Connor was talking about the roller beetle racing, mm -hmm. how they ran the race over and over and over, and like dozens of people were running this race mm -hmm. multiple times, and that logging node never spawned in that one place. Literally nobody caught that, and probably people passed it hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. And then it hit live, and it was like, it's hey, like, oh, yep. guess what? There's a logging <laughs> node here. It's like hundreds of thousands of players all hitting something at the same time. <laughs> that might do it. That might so, do it, yeah. Um, for sure. Well, this isn't technically a Basenji question, mm -hmm. but I'll allow it if you will. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the question uh, from Pac Manners is, uh, do you have any tips on becoming a QA tester for aspiring game devs? Um, I would say... I'm trying to figure out like a, a good way to put it. Um, playing a lot of games is important, but also kind of understanding how these games are built out and each part of the games is also really important too. Um, because, you know, you can look at a game and you can see, when you, when you see a bug in a game, you're like, oh no, that happened, how did that happen? How, did, how, like, how, how could? How could? <laughs> um, but if you... 
in my opinion, if you want to see, if you want to feel out to see if you if you want to be a QA tester or any or, or go through the QA kind mm -hmm. of pipeline uh, mm -hmm. department, uh, I would w when things like that happen, I would take a step back and I would try to figure out like how did that happen? You know, like mm -hmm. what did I do? Mm -hmm. What what about the environment might have caused this? What 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 about the creature and the way that I approached it might have done this? Um, and it's like like it's that kind of stuff. It's a lot. There's a lot of puzzle solving mentality that goes into into QA development. So um, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, that's that's less so like jumping into it and more so like preparing for it, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. Mentality question because at the end of the day, um, if you if you if you know that you want to be a QA or if you want to go into de game development at all, what I would just say is like, you know, go to go to game jams, uh, participate however however you can. You know, like a lot of people want to go in as like designers or um, writers or things like that. You know. But at the end of the day, it's just as fun and just as useful to come in and be like, hey, I want to make audio. Or like, uh, can I do like a QA pass on this or run yeah. through it? Or, you know, or can I like, hey, produce, produce this thing for a game jam. Um, and then just, you know, always be looking and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. You're still making games. Yeah. I mean, you're, which is you're amazing. You're still making games for sure. Awesome. Yeah. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, I'm realizing that we are almost at one o'clock and yeah. I should probably let you do your work. That's fine. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for hanging out with us for the past hour. Thank you so much for giving us a little look behind the scenes of this of this little pet. Yeah. Because I love it. Yeah. No problem. Uh, you know, hopefully, um, we hopefully we get to do more in the future. Uh, we've gotten a lot of a lot of uh, good feedback and a lot of things, a lot of comments that'll allow us to improve uh, if we do future ones. Awesome. But you know, it just all it all depends on on people like it or not. It's pretty much how it goes. They seem to so far. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Not to say that they won't in the future. Yeah. I love it. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And I will see you on the next Guild Chat.